Welcome back to Pinoy Bounds, and today's stat of the night goes to Chris Boucher. He averaged 9.1 points and 6.6 rebounds per game prior uh, prior to Ibaka's comeback. So could he be like a trade bait for for Kevin Love or Tristan Thompson? Because there's a lot of rumors that Kevin Love and Tristan might go to the North. I wouldn't even take Tristan Thompson. I wouldn't even put a thought into him. <laughs> Why, Chris? He's so trash. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> trash. So trash. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was about I to diss him because he's from Brampton, but, we're Branton, but no, we're, we're not going to go that far. We're not taking him back. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Heck no. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But Chris, uh, Chris Boucher has the skill. Like, I think he's a part of, like, the, his body type is made for the, the modern NBA. Mm-hmm. Long, athletic. Um, outside, can inside, run the yeah. floor, can shoot, uh, and can finish in the rim. So I think he could literally, if he can get mentorship from Pascal in terms of how he developed, he could literally be up there, be a dynamic duo. Right? I think Boucher is a kind of a little ways away. He has to gain at least like another 30, 30 mm-hmm. pounds. Ex- yeah. Like you said, his game does, or his body size, or his body type does kind of transition well into today's NBA. It's, mm-hmm. He's a little bit more fluid from what we see from with his frame itself, right? Yeah. But it just like, like what you said, just add in a bit more of the pounds that he can be able can be. to kind of stand like stand like a fridge kind and, of thing. Yeah, you know? so, a bit more that can kind of back down on the yeah, yeah, right? yeah and like now his position is basketball, so they're gonna yeah. put him all over the floor, and mm-hmm. you don't want to look him as a mismatch because teams will take yeah. him down low. So if you can't be down low or play a little defense, mm-hmm. you're not gonna be on the court. So mm-hmm. you got to put some weight on to stay on the court. Yeah. I don't feel like it's easier to gain weight rather than lose weight in, in a game like NBA just yeah. because of the fact that you can always take in more food and you can always take in like supplements to kind of help. Yep. Good with supplements good because supplements. Yeah, there's a yeah, lot yeah. of these players not these the, days. Not the DeAndre, John, like, <laughs> Aiden. Aiden, John Collins kind yeah. of supplements, but I mean like just to kind of get you that muscle mass and then to get you... Look at Giannis. Yeah. I mean exactly. Giannis was able to... I, I think it's better because... If you go from uh, losing, uh, from being overweight to losing weight, you kind of lose the fluidity. Where if you go from, you know, from someone that's skinny frame, and then to you still maintain that yeah. fluidity in your game, and then while you're getting strength, you're kind of building off your skill set along yep. with it. Yeah. So I think it's possible, and I don't think it's hard, even if we get a player like Kevin Love, to give up something like that. Because I thought like we should have given up uh, Pascal when they asked oh, you, Paul you, George you to get it Paul, for Paul George. George? Okay. I was for it. Because okay. I was like, you can never find a player like Paul George. It's hard to find that. As yeah. much as Pascal has been good, I don't know if he's proven to be like a superstar. And then you get to keep Kawhi and, and Paul George. Like, I'm not going to say no to that. Yeah. But yeah, then sure. that's the season kind of went through. You kind of like, oh, wait, like, I can understand now why. It's like it's days. Right? Of, it's like we're not going to yeah. be that championship again. Yeah. But like, it, I think when... You get like, longevity from Yeah, it's the Pascal. longevity of it because yeah. he is still a young guy. Right, you want to still hold the value of what Pascal is. Yeah. You know, eventually, you know, Paul George is deteriorating, you know, right? Even though at 40%, he's still banking shots, yeah. you know, like he's still mm-hmm. unstoppable. But at the same time, it's just like Masai has that kind of, in, it's that kind of investment that he's looking at, right? As mm-hmm. a whole, as a whole core. You know, but like to say what you're saying, I was, I was actually kind of really upset when I heard that Raptors turned down the Paul yeah. George. But yeah. I think it was Paul George and Westbrook. It was Westbrook. Yeah. I'm not mistaken, so I'm like, you, there's, they them there's not a situation where you turn out, like, I'm a, I like Pascal, I think he obviously can still improve, but he's doing, you know, playing good defense, uh, he's getting a little jump shot now, he has his spin move in the paint, he's good, but I, I think people forget how good Paul George is because he's yeah. injured and because he had his two shoulder surgeries, mm-hmm. so I think going forward you might see an even better Paul George, it's kind of like, he's first team all awesome. NBA mm-hmm. um, defense, and offense. And MVP offense. He's voting. the best team, yeah. S2A player, right? So, yeah. Along with Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. And when they get going, and I don't think we've seen yeah. them going yet. So, mm-hmm. Speaking of which, with Pascal kind of falling, I just see him kind of struggling a little bit within these past games, mm-hmm. especially just with what happened the defense with the Clips. Well, yeah, yeah. I feel like, no, I feel like the defense is there, but we just mm-hmm. haven't been banging, well, I say we now. So yeah. The yeah, Raptor yeah, fans, yeah. it's just like, yeah. we just haven't been banging the shots, yeah. right? And now um, a question that we got from one of our fans, one of our viewers is, um, should we, should the Raptors go back to the young lineup and swing back and make that for a change, right? Mm, so Larry, like what we said before last week, Larry sets a different tempo. Larry sets a different pace. Whereas, you know, when we didn't have him and we didn't have Ibaka, we were just mm-hmm. winning all, basically winning all our mm-hmm. games. So, well, you, you can't base it off it because that game against the Clippers, like Fred Van Fleet wasn't playing. Yeah, so that's what and I'm saying. Like, I, if we had a healthy Fred Van Fleet, mm-hmm. 
do you think we would have won that game? I think I think it would have made a difference because yeah. the way they defended. I don't know if you guys noticed that whole game. The way the Clippers defended was they put Kawhi on Lowry and then they put Paul George on Pascal. And that's literally the two best defenders on our two most important players that generates the offense and run the offense. And literally that killed our whole Whole. pace. It killed our whole offense and we couldn't get it going. (laughs) And we just lost by 20. Yeah. (laughs) I think, I think, um, I like the Raptors, but I think the Clippers are a team that looked at that game and like that's like a statement game. Yeah. Um, obviously, Kawhi being back in Toronto, I think he had a, like a point to prove because mm-hmm. even towards the end of the game, they were up a considerable amount, and Kawhi was still calling for the ball mm-hmm. and still trying to go ISO. So I, I, I was kind of like, okay, maybe that's like a statement game because by the third quarter, Pascal was a little gassed, and I think the loss of they uh, Van Fleet. They looked a little tired. Yeah, yeah I think the, the loss no, of Van Fleet was a big deal. They, 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 and they, they were just pressing too hard. Like, there was yeah. just too much of it. Yeah, yeah, because, like, both Paul George and, and Kawhi was going after them. Yeah. And Pascal had to play both sides of the court. Like, he literally had to. And he had to work for every shot he had because Paul George wasn't giving him any. Yeah. Paul George was a very, like, I'm surprised of him not just being a really good perimeter defender, but he's actually a really good post defender too. Yeah. Right? Because he's 6'8". People didn't understand that. Paul George is 6'8". I, I don't think you... I think you forget... I, I think you forget how good Paul George really is. Paul George is about like 6'8". I'd take a 40% Paul George any yeah. day. Yeah. I'd yeah. take him any yeah. day. 40%. It was tough. Yeah. It was tough Give to me watch. an 80? Oh gosh, it's a wrap. Yeah. He was MVP candidate last year, so it's kind of like... Should this worry us though, as a team in terms of... Uh, if we can't even make a statement against a team like this, like... Um, like Van Fleet was out, and I think Van Fleet's mm-hmm. the the best shot creator on the team. Mm-hmm. So I think he would make a difference in a seven game series. That's another question, but in a one game situation, that's can a, we rely on him in a seven mm-hmm. game series to be now, consistent? Yeah, because we had we didn't see that much of it yeah. last season, right? Let's hope he, he, like, let's he, hope he, he has he, another baby. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> another baby coming up during that one playoff time. That's kind of what I'm banking on. Yeah. Uh, but, nah. I think yeah. Raptors would be okay. They're in, they're in good shape. They still have ways to go to improve mm-hmm. to get to that level. They mm-hmm. still got to get through the conference. Boston's mm-hmm. not a joke. Yeah. Bucks mm-hmm. are not a joke. So I, I'm not going to skip over those guys and say they're going to make the finals against Clippers because Clippers still got to get through Lakers. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you never know what can happen. But that, that is a tough matchup for any yeah. team. I think we just yeah. got to go through the adversity and to overcome it and everything just yeah. to see where mm-hmm. the development is for the team. So yeah. I, yeah. that's the way I see it. Sure. Well, James, what are your final thoughts on this? Um... Lately, the Raptors have been playing zone. Have you guys realized that they've been playing one three one? It's and a, no yeah. one, no one, no one plays that in the NBA. Nick Nurse has been playing that. And the last time they played Kawhi, they play one three one, and they stop Kawhi. Now they can't because Paul George is there. So if you play zone, they have to focus on two players. So yeah, that's the sad part. But um, yeah, so we gotta go straight to to who's Mario Sepp with LeBron James traveling. So check this out. 